Okay, in today's demonstration, I am going to do a neurographic face drawing, um, which will look a little bit like Alexander Calder's wire sculpture and some of Dubuffet's work. And I'm going to use that as a structure to paint in some color, but a black, white, and gray scale, which I'll show you how to mix. Okay, so first thing I did was I trace the outline of this face. I'm gonna to have to flip it around so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, you could pick a feeling. Uh, I'm gonna try for an animal and I think it's gonna be a dog. So there's my dog. <laughs> All right. So then I'm going to begin that, you know, that tedious process of wherever there's a cross, wherever lines cross, I'm going to put in this um, concave line. And what that does, it just smooths the transition. So it's not as abrupt. Okay. Some people have skipped this and, and that's okay, but I think this is kind of calming and it gives you time to tune, attune to your composition. Okay, so you would end up doing this whole thing. Of course, I have one waiting in the wings. This is my lion. So my plan is I'm gonna do a black, I already have black and white, but I'm gonna do grayscale. And then I'll probably bring in orange, uh, orange paint, red, and maybe one pop of blue. So that's what I'm thinking. Now I'm going to go to formal paint mixing, grayscale. So this is important to know. So for this painting, probably a generous tablespoon of white. It's the lighter color and black is obviously the darker. A little bit of black goes a long way. So I'm not going to put as much. And I'm going to mix by adding a little bit of black to the white and start bringing the color up gradually towards black. Some people, if you work it in reverse, it's just more complicated. Um, it's like kids sometimes will add a whole lot of red to white to make pink, and they don't realize how intense the red is, and so they're adding more white and more white. Okay, so initially what I do is I reserve some of that white for my painting. And some of the black. Okay, then I'm going to take a, just a little bit of black and add it to that white. And then using my palette knife, just going to scoop that around almost like those people that do the, what is it, dipping chocolate, dipping, yeah. They're mushing the chocolate around. So same kind of thing, but with paint. Okay, so that's a nice gray. I'm going to bring some up here and reserve it for my painting. A little more black. So 
So art is just like being a cook or if you're a ceramicist, you've got to know your glazes and your mixtures. And usually on the wall, there's, you know, a glaze chart, right? I'm going to go a little bit more here so it's more dramatic. Um, so you have that as a reference. So you could also put little swipes to this on a card and then you'd have it in a folder and you could often you could reference that so if you were going to go to a really big painting you would need um, a reference card like that so you would know just like a recipe how to mix um, your colors Okay, I'll go one, one or two more. I'm gonna bump it up a lot, a little more dramatic. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I've got enough there to work with. So I'm going to put this over here. And then here is my painting. And I probably will not do the whole thing, but I'll just get started so you get the idea. Okay, so I'm going to probably do all of this gray, maybe have a red tongue. This will probably be orange. I'm going to get started. Okay. So after you've mixed the paint, you can add water to get, it'll, it'll spread better. Obviously, if you have water, if you add a lot of water, it'll be more transparent like a wash. And then you'll see at a certain point, um, I'm gonna go thicker, which is called impasto, and it's more opaque. So lots of, lots of choices, even within this gray limitation. And I'm using a fairly small uh, nylon round brush so I can get into all of these tiny shapes. Okay, I, I'm i going to add some color now because um, I'm not sure where I want to put the other gray. So I'm going to go with my orange. Actually, it's an Indian yellow.
And this Indian yellow is a little more transparent. I don't know why, that's just the nature of this color. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do at this point, I think you get the idea, I'm going to stop, but I'll still have my screen turned down and then I'll finish the rest. And I think I'm gonna go with a lighter neutral gray backdrop, which Peggy, you should be able to see how it'll make the colors stand out more, but this is probably gonna take me a while. So I think I'm gonna stop here unless people are really insistent that I continue with you know being recorded doing it so if, if you want that you can you can speak up and let me know